Well, one of the things today that I'm going to be doing is separating out some, some more snowdrops. And it's fine when they're in bloom. I'm going to be separating out this bunch here. It's right up next to this log. So I'll dig it up, put it in the bucket, and then I will spread it out. You can see there's a clump there and a few little ones there and one there. So I'm going to spread it out in that area. And in three years time, it'll look like this line of snowdrops here. So I basically just do this, dig down, pop up, and you can see this is a good bunch of snowdrops right up against the root of the tree here. So I'll return some back to there, but the rest I'm going to take off the fork. Oh, doing this one-handed is kind of interesting. Well, actually, you know what I can do is go like that. Okay, so that separates that. And what I'll do is, see, I've taken up some grass here as well. And that's a um, cow parsley, two cow parsleys. I'm gonna take them out of the way because I want these to um, uh, regenerate without the competition. See, cow parsley can be quite a competition until it establishes itself. This snowdrop we probably planted here, oh, a couple of years ago. I've got to turn the film around so you can see what just happened. As I'm bending over, looking at this and this, guess who just jumped on my back? Never mind. Before I could do anything, he jumped off my back. So this is on the driveway into the yard where I'm working with these snowdrops. So basically, somebody was asking me what I do. And, um, oh, that's a bit of root. Okay, I'm gonna take this and separate it out a little bit. Just put this in to kind of loosen the clutch up. There. And do another one, because it's all very tight together. Now, so if I take, the problem is filming with one hand. There we go. Now I've separated off a bunch of snowdrops. So I'm gonna pull these apart. And then when you pull them apart, shake the soil off and there are the bulbs, okay? There's a baby one. See right there is a tiny sweet little baby snowdrop bulb right there. So these, I separate these all off and I'll put them in the bucket. So I'm gonna separate these all off by hand. And there's another baby, sweet little baby snowdrop. The other thing I also do when I'm doing this is um, I take the flowers off because this way they don't keep the bulblets when they're transplanted, start looking to feed the leaves and not produce the seeds or keep the flowers going because the seed heads of the snowdrop is right at the back here. So if I take that off the plant, it won't continue expending energy to see the pollinators have been and will have produced seeds and this will be pollinated but that takes energy so what i do is um snip these all off and it's rather dramatic but this means that they will recover in their new location much quicker so those are the side effects of transplanting so i'm going to do this clump it's kind of my therapy and then come spring in about three years, this will be a wash in snowdrops. You can see we did this three years ago. So in the third year, we got this sweep of snowdrops is now looking established. So it takes about three years. 
Next year, the bulbs will come up thinking they are there, so they'll produce flowers. Then the second year, they're gonna be there and they're gonna go, oh my goodness, we're in a different location. So then there won't be that many flowers. And the third year, they'll start flowering in, and the fourth year, they'll be kind of like this. And more and more. And it just increases and increases. So to get a swathe of snowdrops, like here, that was done well, about six years ago. So that gives you an idea that it takes time, but it is so well worth it. And even that has too many clumps in it. So this needs to be thinned out and then spread even further. And those over there, those snowdrops are all I sowed last year. Oh, here we come. Yep, how are you? Are you gonna jump on my back again while I'm sowing snowdrops? Hmm? Hmm? So funny. Inca's protecting my, my bunch of snowdrops that I've separated out. So now that's what I'm gonna do is separate these out now and put them in the bucket and then I'll show you what I do with the fork to transplant and spread them in that area right there. I want, that's a, a horse chestnut and this is a beech tree and I wanna fill that area so that in this little sweep continues all the way back into the woods and off goes the cat. Okay, okay, I've separated out all of these. So they're all uh, individual bulbs with their own bit of green. See, this was didn't flower. So there's lots of them that didn't flower that uh, this one did. So I'll trim off its flower and get rid of it. Now, out of the big clump that was there, I've saved these big ones here. Here's a series of about a half dozen. And what I'm gonna do is plant them here where the original bunch was. So I'll plant them within the framework of the hole so that they're individuals and then they can turn into a clump quicker to return to the kind of clump that was there that I dug up that I can then use again for somewhere else, okay? I've gotta get rid of the flowers. So you can see these are all the, these were probably some of the original bulbs uh, with their big flowers. Oh. I don't know what the dogs are barking at. something down on the road. Okay, that they're cross about. I don't think it's, nobody's coming up the driveway. So, um, take off the flowers and then um, I'll push this all in. This is a mixture of the flowers and the soil. This one can go in there and I'm always using my fingers. So this there, oops, look, there's a little bulblet I can put, stick my finger in and put it right there in the middle. So this now will grow. These bulbs will flesh out and become a clump quite quickly and return to being a picturesque place. Is that a bulb? Oh, it is. I can put that one in there too. There we go. So there we go. So that was just returned the clump to make it into another clump when the time comes. Oh, look, I've left that flower. So, so these, are the, it's this snowdrop, which is a very common one. We have loads of them here that I put here. Now the rest of these, I'm gonna disperse over there. I have this constant companion here. He keeps jumping on my back when I'm le leaning over. And then as soon as I'm about to film him on my back, he jumps off. Anyway, here I am. See, I've got four of these little snowdrops. I put the fork in, I wiggle it around, pick it up, put it to the next spot, dig it down or shove it down. Then I take these and I find the fork hole in the ground 
and I put the plant in and uh, there we go shove it down with my finger and here we go another one there we go so that's three now I've got to find the fourth hole there it is and sink it down in there now one of the reasons I'm doing this now is you can see these leaves here these are the wood anemones and if you look under here the wood anemones are all coming up uh, in a uh, as a lot so I want to get the snowdrops transplanted before all the wood anemone come up you can see these are those are wood, blue wood anemone. That's Jack in the Pulpit or um, Lords and Ladies, whatever you want to call it. And there's cow parsley. Cow parsley is a lot hardier. But the wood anemone I love. So doing this transplanting now is much better than doing it later. Because at the moment, it's just coming up. And now I can get, um, shove these in without too much of a problem. So it makes it easier. I'm not stonking, tromping all over the, um, well, I am at the moment, kind of. So I could say I'm kind of doing what I don't want to do. But it's better to do it now rather than later when there's a lot more, um, when there's a lot more um, wooden enemy coming up. And this way, most of it is still under the ground. So, there we go. Ah. And see, the other great thing about this fork is it's not very straight. The tines are, well, actually, somebody straightened the tine for me. Maybe Tom did that. Okay, well, this is how I'm doing my snowdrops. I think Tom probably straightened it, not realizing that I like it being crooked. Uh, to offset the uh, snowdrops. So um, this is, look, you can see the wooden enemies are coming up right next to where I'm planting the snowdrops. Okay, so putting them, sliding them down with my finger. Oh, there's loads of them. Oh, they sometimes come up again as my finger withdraws from the hole. The um, bulb comes with it, my finger. Not the most clever, but um, slowly but surely. See, some of this ground is so soft that I can just put my finger in and push the bulb down. So, um, yeah, look, I can do that right there. It's just my finger going in, it's so soft. And then put the bulb in. So, because the ground has so, um, been so rained on that it's soft enough to do that. There we go. So you can see, I mean, that in a few years time will be a beautiful flush of snowdrops and it'll fill out all around this downed beech tree. There we go. Just a few more to go. Ink is inspecting my work. You can vaguely see little hairy bits that are all the snowdrops that I transplanted. This is where the original clump was. And here I wanted to show you why I decapitate the flowers. These are the seed heads of this little clump coming up. So you can see, this is the flower, it's been pollinated. Then the bloom dies back and the seed head starts growing. So that's the seed head growing to spread more snowdrops. And what happens is, as this gets heavier and heavier and heavier, it goes down to the ground and it rests against the soil. And then those seed heads go, um, the seeds go then down into the soil. So here's some more you can see are at that um, earlier stage of the seed head development. So, but as you can see, these will get heavier and heavier as they get bigger and bigger and bigger and it'll go boop, down into there. And it will then remake more snowdrops. Isn't that right, Inca? Isn't that right, Maya? Oh, you've popped that seed head up again, haven't you, Inca? Yeah. 
Anyway, and those are the, this is the detritus of all the flowers that I decapitated. So hopefully that will become a swathe of snowdrops uh, in the next three, four years that we started with this line and then it'll sweep back out into the wood. Now that I've done this triangle, fill that all in. You can see this is what we did a few years ago. But fill that area all in is what I did today. So you can see there's more snowdrops here. This is a holly tree. And here's another swathe of snowdrops we did about three, four years ago. And so the next time I'm going to be doing clumps, I'm going to move them up into the woods there. So those will all be snowdrops going up there. So that's kind of slowly creating these swathes of snowdrops, which is what you see there. That's taken a number of years to create that dusting of white snowdrops. But every year, like this year, we've put more snowdrops all in there as well. So that will keep moving out further and further under the beech and the ash trees. And then here we have some more snowdrops that we scattered through about two years ago. Right here, we broke up a big clump and separated it out so that there'll be more snowdrops in here. You can see the wood anemones are beginning to bloom. There's the wood anemones. They're blue, 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 beautiful blue. So this sometime, you can see there's a few snowdrops there, but I want to do snowdrops sweeping up under here as well. It all takes time and you do a little, little bit every year and it's great fun to watch it develop. We have um, cyclamen and then there's crocuses in here as well. You can see the crocuses and these are cyclamen. They flowered in the autumn. And there's more crocuses over there. So it's all for look beautiful and for pollinators, etc. And you can see that's dog damage. Uh, the dogs wrestling. Squish those daffodils, but that's fine. And those bluebells. See, those are bluebells. Those are daffodils. But it's all part of the constant of trying to spread and improve the biodiversity all across the farm. And it's lovely around here because this increases pollinators. It's not just bees and bumblebees and honeybees, but different kind of flies and things like that. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's a different introduced snowdrop over there. These snowdrops here are ones that have been here in clumps that I've been slowly spreading throughout the farm. So I'm not, I can't remember which is the Russian and which is the Syrian, but one of the, one of these is a Russian one and one is a Syrian one that my grandfather introduced here to the farm.